I want to welcome everyone to the channel here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, just a general search pattern for head CT. I'll go through some images with you to kind of show you a general uh, systematic way you might look at images. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll start by looking at some axial images. Uh, we'll have them in both brain and bone window. Uh, then we'll take a look at some of the reconstructions that you often have available on modern scans, uh, which are sagittal and coronal images. What we'll do is we'll start off with some axial images. We'll have the brain window on the left and the bone window on the right. So for this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about a general approach to head CTs. I'm going to show you how to look at it, what kind of images you're looking at, and how you might uh, go through it in a systematic fashion. Here I have some images from a head CT. This is a young man who came to the ER for trauma. And you see there's two sets of images here. Uh, for those of you who are beginning, the images on the left are in a brain window. The images on the right are in a bone window. So the amount of information that's shown is a little bit different on each one. Additionally, one on the left is filtered to look a little bit more smooth, while the one on the right is filtered to look a little bit sharper. So when I start looking at a head CT, I first start by looking at the brain window. Uh, the brain is the first thing I look at. I start from inferior to superior, so I start at the lowest slice available. I start here at the kind of upper spine and frame and magnum. Here you can see this is the upper part of the spinal cord. And as I scroll through, what you're going to see is we're going to come into the posterior fossa. And so you come out of the upper spinal cord into the brain stem. And you start seeing the cerebellar hemispheres there. And the first thing I look at is the posterior fossa and cerebellar hemispheres. And that can be a very challenging part of the study. Uh, you want to look at this area and make sure the CSF spaces are maintained. And here you see the cerebellar hemispheres again. And uh, you want to make sure there's no hemorrhage. You want to make sure that gray-white differentiation is maintained. So here you get an idea. You have gray matter and white matter more centrally. Here's the fourth ventricle. You see like both sides are symmetric. And you don't have any uh, any areas where you're seeing any suspected abnormalities. As you come up again, you're seeing the rest of the cerebellum here. And uh, so the posterior fossa and cerebellum, in this case, is uh, normal. Now, it can be very challenging, especially around this level. You get a lot of artifact from the mastoids, uh, from the adjacent sinuses. You can see a lot of streak through these areas, so it can be a, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but in this case, it's normal. Now, once I'm through with the posterior fossa, I generally come up a little bit higher and I kind of focus on around this slice. And I kind of take a look at uh, this slice because this is giving you a nice overview of the basal cisterns, the CSF spaces that's around the base of the brain. So here, you normally get like kind of a six star shaped uh, space here uh, where you have a number of cisterns. And you want to see those cisterns and you want to see that they're CSF filled so you don't have any brain herniating down into them, and you want to see that there's no blood in them. So you're, if you have, see anything that's abnormally hyperdense in them, then that's uh, something that's going to be a problem. Now, you see a number of like little bright structures here. Those are blood vessels. You see this one in Sylvian Fisher is the MCA. This little dot that you see here is the tip of the basilar artery. It's going to branch into two PCAs. Here you see the MCA on the other side. So it's normal to see those vessels a little bit. Uh, this is not uh, hyperdense. Uh, just seeing all of those CSF structures, though, is a nice sign, and it's good to uh, know that those are there. Uh, that gives you a lot of notion of that there's symmetry and that there's nothing abnormal here. Uh, once you're satisfied with that, then typically I'll begin from the bottom of, kind of the supersentorial white matter and look at those trouble spots are definitely the kind of the inferior aspects of the frontal lobes, inferior temporal lobes. You definitely want to be looking for any abnormal hemorrhage, um, anything like that. Um, and you want to scroll up, and as you do, you want to look for overall symmetry, and you want to make sure that the great white differentiation is maintained. So uh, I'll stop here for a second. I'll just sharpen the window a little bit. Uh, here is a very important level because this you have kind of the insula, and you want to see that you have a normal white matter in the insula. That's a very common place where you'll see uh, infarcts. And you also want to be able to carefully kind of trace uh, the white matter at every level. So you see that at every level, the brain should be coated with gray matter and you shouldn't have any loss of that gray-white differentiation. 
Uh, as you move higher, I mean, you're not going to individually trace every single one or every single level, but what you do want to see is that it's not lost at any of those levels. And as you come up, you're going to maintain, uh, maintain that symmetry, and you're looking for symmetry, any loss of the soul sign, uh, to see if there's any, any swelling. Now, there are a few important structures that you're at this level. You see the third ventricle, you have the frame of Monroe here, and uh, then you see the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. As you come a little higher, you're going to see the uh, other portions of the lateral ventricles here, and uh, you come a little higher. As you see, this is a normal study, so in every uh, situation, like the gray-white differentiation is maintained. Now, this is a relatively young person, so you see not a lot of space in the sulci. So as you come to the vertex here, uh, you do see some sulci that contain CSF, but they're not, they're not very big uh, because this person has normal brain volume. Uh, so typically, like once I've gone through that, I'm satisfied that this patient is normal. I want to look uh, for any subdural hemorrhages, and uh, so you want to look for any uh, place where the brain is displaced from the skull, and we don't we don't see that here. Uh, one thing you should also be cautious of is on a typical brain window, the skull is really bright and can hide a small subdural hemorrhage there. Uh, so you may consider looking at a, uh, at a kind of softer window uh, where you're looking where you have kind of a little bit more or less bright skull so you can see uh, any ice events, subdural hemorrhage or not. Uh, now once I'm finished with that, uh, what I'll do is I'll take a look at the soft tissues, make sure there's no soft tissue swelling or anything going on in their orbits. You see the globes bilaterally, you've got the lens here, you want to take a look at that. And uh, you can take a quick look at the sinuses as well, make sure there's no masses or bone destruction. Um, now you want to move on to your bone window. Uh, here we have the bone window on the right. Again, like this is going to give you a much better look uh, at the bones themselves and not such a great look at the soft tissue. But you see the edges are also, uh, are also much sharper. Uh, here we're seeing from the lowest levels, we're seeing the posterior arch of C1 and the tip of the dens here. And uh, as we scroll up, we're going to see some of the structures of the face, pterygopalatine fossa, the orbits here in sinuses, and we're looking for any fractures, anything abnormal. We don't see any disruptions in the cortex. Now, as you come up a little bit higher, we get into the temporal bones here. You see the external auditory canals. Here you have uh, the external auditory canal over here. The mastoid air cells are nicely aerated. If you have fluid in the mastoid air cells, you want to take note of that, not because it's so important by itself, but because it can be a sign of another, another injury or infection. Here you see the ossicles, and, uh, and you see the internal air structures, so the cochlea you get a little glimpse of there, semicircular canals and vestibule. Here you see the internal auditory canal. Uh, again, coming through the skull base, you have the pituitary fossa here. Uh, you just want to take a general look at these, and you're looking again for any cortical disruption, any lesion that's uh, causing bone to be lost or bone to be absent, uh, or in, in the case of many emergent studies, you're looking for any, any fractures. Now, as you come up, it's normal to have these little lines through the uh, calvarium in specific locations. Uh, those are the normal sutures, so uh, just be aware that those exist, uh, so you're not calling them fractures all the time. As you come higher, again, you're looking for just symmetry and any disruption of that bone. So here we're not seeing any of that. So again, this is uh, just axial views of a normal study. Now we'll take a look at some sagittal reconstructions. Now, after you finish looking at your axial images, uh, many times in the modern area, you're going to have some additional images to look at. Um, you may see some that look uh, like this image that you're seeing on right here. So it's a single axial slice. It's got some lines drawn through it. Uh, this is showing you a way that the image is going to be reformatted. So modern helical scanners take very uh, thin acquisitions and it can be easily reformatted into different planes. And so what's been done on the right here is this data has been reformatted into the sagittal plane. So you're going to see data that's projected along this way. Uh, so as I scroll through this, uh, what I'm going to get is I'm going to see data in a sagittal uh, direction. And you'll see now on my image there's a line on the other images that's showing me exactly where that data is coming from. 
and what you're getting is just a different view of the brain. Uh, so you're seeing now we're coming into the temporal lobe and we're seeing a little bit of frontal lobe. We've got to get a look at the sylvian fissure here. Uh, so that should be a CSF space. You should see normal sulcation. And again, you're getting another look at uh, grading white differentiation here. So uh, another chance to see any, any subtle disruptions in gray white differentiation. Now, you're going to see some additional structures that you'll see better on this actual image. Uh, for one, you're going to see the tentorium. It's going to be this dense line here uh, as you go through. And uh, you also want to pay attention to some areas like the temporal horns. Here you see this is streak artifact from the bone. Um, beam hardening essentially uh, where you're going to uh, where you're kind of losing uh, normal areas there and that's just an artifact of CT. Now as you come towards the midline you get like uh, what what's a really helpful view here is the midline sagittal view uh, where you get a really nice look at some midline structures. Here you see the pituitary, here you see the midbrain, pons, and medulla here. You get a nice look at it, kind of the central portions of the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle here. Uh, here you see the internal cerebral veins that are draining into the vein of gale and the straight sinus here. Uh, you get a little bit of a wisp of the inferior sagittal sinus and superior sagittal sinus. You can see that all those structures are in a normal position. Here you see the cerebral aqueduct. You have to use your imagination to see what it goes right through there and comes into the fourth ventricle here. And you can see also the fourth ventricular outflow tract. Uh, as it comes out here, uh, you can see the midbrain you know, tectum here as well. So that's uh, kind of a nice view. You see all those things are normal. Uh, here, there you see the mass intermediate or the medial portions of the thalamus. Uh, so you know from looking at this that you're, you're looking at uh, symmetric uh, midline structures. And then you want to go through uh, to the other side and kind of do the same thing. So again, you're seeing the tentorium on the other side. Uh, the anterior temporal pole, the posterior fossa, you're kind of seeing all of those. Uh, now once you've gone through that in the brain window, what you, what you want to do is switch to your bone window, take a look at the bones and that reconstruction as well. Uh, I'll do it here for this as well, just so you can see. Uh, you see the temporal mandibular joints, you've got to look at the orbits here. And uh, this is important because you can sometimes see fractures which are oriented in a way that uh, that you don't appreciate them well in axial. Now uh, what you see is a little bit of artifact here from the way the images are stitched together. Uh, this is in fact a helic axially acquired data. I'm sorry, it's not helical. Uh, so that tends to lead to a little bit of artifact. Uh, but here you see again, these structures are all normal. So this is what a normal sagittal uh, reconstruction of the brain looks like. And finally, we'll take a look at some coronal reconstructions. For the final part of this video, we're going to have some images that are coronally reconstructed. So again, you see images that are very similar to what you saw before. Only these reconstruction lines are going this way, so you're going to see them in the coronal plane. Here you have your axial, here you're going to have coronals. And uh, again, you can scroll through. Uh, here we're starting from front to back, kind of a brain window. Now these images uh, they're, they're excellent for seeing some areas which can be trouble spots. These inferior frontal lobes can be very challenging to see on the axial, uh, just because of all the other structures down here. Uh, but they can be uh, really a nice troubleshooting tool uh, for uh, problems in those areas. You get a nice look at the orbits. Uh, so you see the globes, uh, the extraocular muscles on each, on each side here. Uh, you get a good look at the symmetry of the lateral ventricles. Uh, you see again the sylvian fissures as you're coming into those. And you see the temporal horns here. So these are the kind of supercellular cisterns, the C-cephalid spaces that are above the pituitary. Um, past the pituitary, I think it's um, kind of down here. Uh, but again, you see that they're ventricle, lateral ventricles. Again, you see everywhere you look, you have normal gray white differentiation. Uh, so no loss of gray matter uh, anywhere over the line. Here you see the tentorium, so that's the structure that we were, we were seeing on the sagittal images. And uh, then you also get a nice look at some of the venous structures, the paired internal cerebral veins, vein gain line and straight sinus as it comes back. Here you're seeing the transverse sinuses as they uh, come around from the torcula here at the back. Uh, but again, you just get another look at the brain, get another look at these trouble spots, see the gray-white differentiation here. 
you get a nice look at uh, fourth ventricle uh, posterior fossa. So again, you're just troubleshooting to look for anything that you may have missed on the on the other images. Uh, these are not necessarily like a big part of the primary search pattern. Uh, once you're done with that, you want to again take a quick look through the bone windows, make sure there's nothing you've missed. Uh, and make sure you check the edges of the images, the occipital condyles, you get to the dens a little bit. Again, the mastoid air cells, temporomandibular joints. As you come through and as you come forward, you'll see the sinuses, nasal passages, and orbits. And again, there's a little bit of sinus mucosal thickening here, but, uh, but nothing that really makes this uh, study not normal. Uh, so once you've done all that, uh, you've gone through, you're satisfied that your study is normal, and you can go forward to dictating your report or dictate it as you go. Now, I've shown you a kind of a prolonged pattern for looking at these. In reality, of course, you're going to get faster in looking at that. You're going to be doing it unconsciously, like not necessarily reminding yourself to look at every single individual thing, but it will become uh, somewhat automatic as you spend a lot more time looking at these. So thanks everyone for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. Uh, if you did, uh, check out the other uh, videos in our channel. And uh, hopefully we'll be adding more videos soon. Thanks.